morning, church. We are excited to worship with you today here at Fredericksburg UMC. Today, we celebrate and remember with other Christians the baptism of Jesus. And as part of our service today, we will remember our baptisms as well. You are welcome to gather a bowl or a cup of water and to have that with you for that part of our service later today. And if you are with us and you are not baptized, one of our pastors would love to have a conversation with you about baptism. You can reach out to one of our pastors anytime, even today, and the pastors are always happy to share about the goodness of Christ. Now, we also invite you to please see your weekly email for a note about a call to compassion from our pastors. We thank you for helping us continue to do no harm, for we are stronger together. Uh, Some upcoming ministry opportunities. The next Mom's Morning Inn has been rescheduled for this Wednesday, January 12th at 9.30. Please RSVP with our children's director, Jillian Murray, if you need childcare for this event. Our next family dinner will also be on Wednesday the 12th. This is going to be a no-cost dinner of pizza and salad, and we'll have a fun time of fellowship. We invite you to email our family director, Kim Carrier, uh, to reserve your dinner. Now, the, the new year is a great time to take the next step in your faith and commitment to Christ through the church FUMC's next membership event will be next Sunday, January 16th at 3 p.m. Come learn about uh, what membership means, hear stories from church members and about why they have made this decision, and you'll even have an opportunity at the end of that event to take the membership vows yourself. With all of these things, we invite you to check out the church's Facebook page, our website, and our weekly email for the many ways that we can connect together here at FUMC. But now, let us ready our hearts and minds for worship. Let us join together now in our call to worship. We gather to worship the one who gives living water. Spring up, O well, within our souls, for we are thirsty for you. In our dry and arid places, may the waters of baptism refresh us. Stir up inside of us with the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Renew us with living water. May we be reminded today of our connection to one another through God's gift of the church. And through this holy connection, may we be blessed with the eternal well that never runs dry. May the Holy Spirit within us overflow to saturate the stagnant areas of our lives 
reconnect us, Almighty God, to all that is holy and right. Let us remember our baptism and be thankful today. Take us to the waters. Amen. Please join us now in our opening hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Church. My name is Jillian Murray. I'm the Director of Children's Ministries at FUMC and I'll be giving you your Sunday children's message. So kids, do your parents keep pictures of you? Maybe they have them printed and stored in photo albums or in a box. If they don't have them printed, I bet they have them stored on their phones or the computers. Probably thousands of pictures. So I pulled these out. These are two um, photo books that I have kept of Jane over the years. And they just have um, fun little pictures of her doing little special things around town. Oh, that's a cute one. I love looking at these pictures so much. Why do we keep pictures of our kids though? Well, of course, we love them. They're our kids and we want to look at these pictures and just be reminded of how pleased and how proud we are of our kids and watch them grow up and do all of these fun, special things. Now, do you think that God was proud and pleased with his son, Jesus? Well, of course. God loved Jesus so much. And on the day that Jesus was baptized, God actually spoke out and said, this is my son with whom I am very pleased. Now, of course, God loved Jesus. He was his parent, right? He was so happy and so proud of him, especially on this day when he got baptized. Now, baptism is a really, really cool and neat thing. When we trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we become children of God too. Our baptism is kind of like this adoption ceremony. God loves us from the very beginning when we become his children because that's what he wants us to be. 
God says to us, you are my son or you're my daughter and I love you and I am pleased with you. That is so awesome, isn't it? And do you think that God has a photo album or a photo book like this in heaven with all of our pictures in it? Well, maybe not so much a paper book, but we are his kids and he's so pleased with us that he probably looks at us and he says, I love you. I know he does, right? So God, thank you so much for adopting us as your children. Thank you for loving us so, so much, just the way you love Jesus too. Amen. Happy Sunday. It's with joy that we come to a time in our service today to acknowledge the new leaders among us in the church that are serving in roles of leadership. In your Friday email, you receive that leadership lead list. There are many that lead and serve in our congregation, but these are those that have been nominated uh, to offices like the church council, the board of trustees, um, and other important committees in the church. And so I encourage you, if you didn't get a look at that list, to take a look at it. And if you'll join me now um, and um, say in a prayer of blessing for our leaders for this year. Let us pray together. Holy and amazing God, we come to you now, Lord, with these leaders before us. We thank you for the discernment process, Lord, of our, our lay leadership, our nominations team, all those that worked in um, having conversations and discernment, and for the faithfulness of your people that have stepped forward to come alongside the pastoral team and our staff and to work alongside us in the ministries of your church for the various and appointed positions. Pour out your spirit on each of those teams and committees, upon their chair people, upon those that surround them in the work of ministry, from the ministries to the administrative offices, Lord. Just pour out your spirits. Lead and guide us in the freshness of this new year, in these times that are challenging, to always keep your spirit in front of us. And to be guided in a way that we lift up your son Jesus in all things. That people would be drawn to him. And that all that we do, Lord, would glorify you. So bless us, lead us, guide us, unite us for your vision in this place, Lord. That there would be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. And that we would be about your work in this place of making disciples of your son for the transformation of the world. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Church, as we come to a time of prayer for the members of our congregation, of this community, of this world, there are so many that we want to lift up to God together today. We extend our sympathy to Carol Lachance and her family on the loss of her brother-in-law, Bob Mars for Tina Renninger and family on the death of her aunt, uh, Bill and Cindy DeWitt and family on the passing of Bill's mother, as well as uh, Abby Kwan's grandmother. We pray for those that have been in the hospital this week, like Anne Linkus Ham, as well as those with health concerns, such as Tina Sheffield and Brenda Goodpasture and Glenn Goodpasture, Doug Holbrook, Glenna Lee and Betty Drew, Carl Williams, Brian Brandt, Sandra Godfrey, Martha and Gordon Linkus, Destiny Danville, Steve Hoover and Wayne Hedge, Stephen Dellinger and Bob Lewandowski, Smokey Reed and Sally, Will Hauser and Suzanne Tull, Emily, Paul Wiseman, Matthew and Carla Earps, Jason and Jackie, Sally Richardson and Andrea Hartfield, Annette, Camille, and Dewey Bass. We are also in prayer for all of our sisters and brothers who have been affected by the winter storm this week. For those that have lost power and food, those that are still in the cold. And we also give God uh, thanks 
for the neighbors that have seen the needs of, of those that uh, maybe have been blocked in and there's homes, uh, the, the trees that have been down and have gone out uh, to help those who need assistance. For all that we've named aloud and the others that we lift up to God on our hearts, let us pray. God of living waters, we come to you today uh, filled with, with so much. We come to you today with joy on our hearts for a time to gather as your people from our living rooms or our kitchen tables uh, with family and friends, uh, whether they be with us in person or through uh, our online connections. God, we give you thanks. We thank you for all those that have seen the needs of their sisters and brothers this week and have gone to lend a hand to, to share coats, to offer up guest rooms. We pray for those that have had uh, safe travels, those that may be heading back to school for the next semester, those that have uh, finished papers and are looking forward to a time of rest and celebration for opportunities to begin a new year with uh, your love in our hearts. God, for all of this, we just say thank you. God, we also give you thanks for the joy of all of the children and the youth and families connected with our Upward Basketball Ministry for games that have been and will be played, for practices that have started, and for the news of your Son, Jesus Christ, that are being shared with all that are uh, participating. And God, with our joys, we also come to you with heavy hearts. We pray for those that are in the midst of grief over the loss of loved ones, those that are ill and are uh, in the process of, of healing, of seeking help to learn what next steps are available to them for our physicians and care providers who uh, may find themselves today feeling weary with all that is before them, for those that are still without power, those that are just looking forward to the next day when they may be able to get warm, those who are hurting and all whose lives are affected by the pandemic. God, we come to you with, with all of this before us. Help us to feel the presence of your Spirit, to be able to drink from your living waters. And in the midst of all of this, know that you are with us, that we are not alone, and that your hope springs eternal. God, we pray for all whose lives are affected by situations and circumstances beyond our control, our neighbors that are still recovering from wildfires out west, our sisters and brothers around the world that are living in communities that are being rocked by civil unrest. God, we, we come to you seeking your peace, seeking your good news, and to, to take once more of your waters, which will never have us run dry. God, we pray for your leaders, your leaders in your church, the, the leaders of communities and of this world. We pray that they may be granted wisdom and strength as they guide all of the people that are in their charge. God, on this day where we celebrate the baptism of your Son, Jesus Christ, help us to remember the, the hope that we have in you today and in this new year. We pray all of this in the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue to worship this morning with a time of sharing our tithes and our offerings, you are welcome to share your gifts through uh, a multitude of electronic means, uh, and you are more than welcome to bring your tithes and offerings to the church as well. Now let us reflect on our musical offertory, More Precious Than Silver.
Let us pray. Holy God of redemption and transformation, today we remember the baptism of Jesus as well as our own. Though there was nothing in your Son that needed cleansing, we know our insides are not that clear. We have dark and dirty corners that cannot be redeemed through gifts of money or good deeds. Only as we accept and acknowledge your gifts of grace through Christ can we be made clean, healthy, and whole. We give as those who are dependent on your grace, and we pray that our gifts will help others know the cleansing power of grace as well. In the name of Christ who died for us, we pray. Amen. Jesus will certainly never fail you, for the grace extended in our baptism extends for all eternity. Thanks be to God. Don't you just love that video that we just looked at that imagined what the day would have been like when Jesus came to the River Jordan to be baptized? Can you see it in your own mind's eye, what it must have been like to to see Jesus moving into that water, rising from the water, the Spirit descending like a dove, and the voice of God breaking forth from the heavens. Today, we come back to the river and to the waters once more. John the Baptist baptized as a call from the Holy Spirit to repentance, and Jesus submitted himself to that holy call and ritual as a way of standing with all of us and claiming that there is absolutely no limit to the overwhelming nature of God's love. And so I invite us today to hear the life-changing story, to be reminded of Jesus' baptism as we turn to the Gospel of Matthew today. We'll be in chapter 3, and our reading begins at verse 13. Let us give reverence now to the reading of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. 
John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to pray. Let us pray. Holy God, as we splash water across our face to awaken us in the morning, may your word today awaken us to your presence. Wash us today with your wisdom. Bathe us in your goodness And always refresh us, Lord, with your grace. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Well, as I begin today, I want to say first that as we talk baptism today, if you are not baptized, or perhaps if you have not led your children to be baptized, I, myself, or any of our pastors would absolutely love, we would love to speak with you about how that situation can be changed. As you are ready, we would be so glad and humbled and blessed just to talk to you, to sit down and assist you, counsel you, lead you in the ways of Christ Uh, For it is a true joy. It's one of the greatest joys in our ministry to have those conversations. It's a favorite conversation, actually. So if you're hearing this sermon today and and you're hearing about baptism, the baptism of Jesus and remembering baptism in our service, and you're not baptized or you haven't had your kids baptized, come talk to me. Come talk to one of our pastors. Now, for all of us, I want you to think of your memories of baptism. It might be a memory of seeing someone else baptized the memory of your own baptism, those close family members, friends, confirmands that we've seen baptized here in this place in our church. If you were baptized as a baby or a child and you don't remember your baptism, what do you remember about what people told you or have told you about the day of your baptism? Today, we call upon those memories of coming to the water together of entering into the stream of grace that began at the Jordan River with John and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when I think of baptism, I have so many rich memories. I could, I could speak for a long time about memories of baptisms. First, I, I think about my own baptism in the 1970s, yes, of wearing my favorite long dress, 1970s long dress, down into the baptismal waters to be immersed as a young Methodist. Yes, let me say that again. I was Methodist and I was immersed. Let's pause right there. Let's just don't push your pause button, but let's pause to talk about Methodist baptism for a minute. Did you know that Methodist historically and in our current contemporary context that we can baptize by any method? It doesn't have to be sprinkling. It doesn't have to be at a font like here in our sanctuary. Methodists will pour over you. Methodists will immerse you. They'll take you to a pool, to a river, uh, to a body of water. Because we believe, our belief is not in the method of baptism, but it's in the spirit that claims us, God's Holy Spirit that claims us. And the water is given to us as a life-giving force, a symbol that represents us being cleansed and quenched. So you can end that pause, but just know that your Methodist pastor was immersed and all of us probably came to the baptismal waters in different ways. And God accepts those ways if you come to him with a willing heart. Now, back to baptismal memories. We'll move off that pause. Back to memories of baptism. For me, 
Man, a lot of memories come to mind, like I said. I, I remember so clearly, I've spoke about it before, the day I baptized my dad. The day my dad was on his knees before me, the Lord, and a gathered church, and I baptized him. It was one of the most blessed and holy moments, I think, of my life. Also, the same, the day my children were baptized by a mentor and a, a great United Methodist friend of mine and Reverend Dr. David Canada. What a holy joy. With those personal moments, I also remember countless people, countless people who have been baptized through my human hands. People have handed me their little ones and they have bowed down on their knees before God and entered into this holy covenant that connects us. I think in, in my memories, I think of times when I've had preemie babies that I have rested in just one of my hands and baptized them in the hospital. And of older adults who have humbly been drawn to this holy experience of amazing grace. Being a pastor, it's a pretty cool thing on a lot of days. But in those moments, it's worth all the highs and lows that we go through. All the, the times when we sit through death and trauma, those baptismal moments, they are treasured instances of joy and celebration for us. And those are, those are moments that, for me, they're hard to bring words to. Like, I can't write or I can't say the words to say what they mean. It is like a moment where... Uh, when we look at those faces and when we see a family gazing into the face of their baby, it's like heaven surrounds us. It's like uh, the realm between heaven and earth are truly ripped open and we see the face of God in those moments. I have to say that during the time of the pandemic when we were asked not to baptize, when uh, things were, were so bad before. Those were some of the hardest days, I think, of the pandemic. Uh, and a, an example during that time was having a whole conver uh, confirmation class that Pastor Josh had led through confirmation. And we couldn't gather them in person for vows or for those that needed to be baptized. Who would have ever imagined that that could happen? The truth is, as, as we think about those things, those memories, those hard memories, there were good memories, too, of home baptisms uh, when we resumed and, and many other times of drawing around the font. But I hope as we remember those times that we do reconnect to this need of ours to remember our baptisms, to cherish these foundational and formative experiences that are at the base for us, I believe, of life itself for us. We need them. We need to celebrate and, yes, remember. And that's part of what we do today. We do this because I believe and the scriptures profess that we are wired for this connection through the Holy Spirit, through the need and the just life force that the waters of baptism give us. And we remember this and we see this as we look to Jesus' entry into the waters of baptism in the Jordan. So let's talk a little bit about Jesus' baptism day now. You saw it very well depicted, I think, in that video. It was imagined really well of what it might look like for, for John and, and Jesus to have that conversation and to Jesus just to bow and enter under the waters there, however it happened. In Matthew's telling of the story, you first see that conversation between the cousins, Jesus and John. John doesn't feel that he can do it, like you're coming to, to be baptized by me. <laughs> you, you really should be baptizing me, John says and thinks. And Jesus, Jesus returns and says to him, it is proper for us, proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness, Jesus says. Think about those words Jesus used, baptism as proper and as fulfillment. Fulfillment for all righteousness, for righteousness' sake. This is the statement that changes John's mind as we watch the dialogue unfold, as we heard it unfold in Matthew's gospel. And it allows God's spirit to fill Jesus and for the proclamation of his beloved nature to be heard 
by mere humans again. It's much like the proclamations that we saw coming from on high in the birth narrative of Jesus and the Christmas story that we have just moved through. We hear from the heavens, from the voice of God, this is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. The Spirit moves upon Christ, it descends, and Jesus as cla- is claimed as the Beloved. In these moments, in these movements, Jesus enters into the muck and mire of the Jordan, if you've ever seen and it's not a pretty rig- river. And entering into that place, he enters into the muck and mire of our need for repentance. Our need to turn and to return to God. He shows us the outpouring of God's grace in that outpouring that is eternal. And it has no limits. It has no ends. In his receipt of the Spirit and his blessing as the beloved, we join in those gifts and we join in that same stream of grace, that amazing grace. The Apostle Paul writes about this so well in Romans chapter 8, one of my favorite chapters in Scripture. This begins reading there at verse 4. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him, Paul writes. Jesus' baptism allows us to follow as spirit-led children of God. To be glorified with Jesus, our brother, and worthy to call to God like a child calls to a father, Abba, or Daddy. To be claimed as heavenly parent by us, by our just simple, sinful selves. We claim the holiest Father. Now that's worth remembering, I think, today, and it's certainly worth celebrating. In the story called The River, Southern novelist Flannerly O'Connor tells of the day that Bevel a child of an alcoholic and abusive parents, is taken to a baptizing by his baby sister, by his, not his baby sister, his babysitter, (laughs) Miss Conan. And I read a quote from this day's scene. Well, let's listen to this. Have you ever been baptized, the preacher asked. What's that, he murmured. If I baptize you, the preacher said, you'll be able to go to the kingdom of Christ. You'll be washed in the river of suffering, son. You'll go by the deep river of life. Do you want that? Yes, the child said and thought, I want to, I want to have to not go back to the apartment. I'll go to the river. You won't be the same again, the preacher said. You'll count. And without much more warning, he tightened his hold and swung him upside down and plunged him head in the water. He held him there while he said the words of baptism. Then he jerked him up and looked sternly at the gasping child. Bevel's eyes were dark and dilated. You count now, the preacher said. You didn't even count before. The boy was too shocked to cry. He spit out muddy water, rubbed his wet face on his sleeve and into his eye and over his face. Don't forget his mama, Miss Conan called back. She's sick. Lord, said the preacher, we pray for somebody in affliction who isn't even here to testify. Is your mother sick in the hospital, he asked. Is she in pain? The child stared at him. She hasn't got up yet, he said in a dazed voice. She's got a hangover. The air was so quiet you could hear the broken pieces of the sun knocking on the water. O'Connor writes. Well, that's a harsh depiction of baptism. 
as well as a pretty harsh depiction of a child that so needed the love of Jesus Christ. I believe that scene from O'Connor holds some truth. It holds some truth. For the waters of baptism are splashed and poured out for all of us broken, weary, no-count sinners saved only by God's amazing grace. The water and the spirit that attaches some way in the basic elements of that H2O is a mystery of grace. And it makes us count. And it does so much more for us. Those intertwinings of water and spirit and the grace of God make us, like Christ, heirs with him, beloved of God. Those waters, those baptismal waters that we remember today and that we will bless in a few moments, they are for children broken by abuse. And they're for moms with hangovers and dads that struggle with addiction. They are for highbrow people in our society and for those also lost on the margins. It's all just the same in the kingdom of Christ. And those waters, they are for people that other people call unworthy. And they are for those who have it so wrong in thinking that they are the worthy. These waters are for male and female, for babies and older persons and anyone in between. For all walks, all races, races and all nations. And in Jesus' words, they are proper for the fulfillment of all righteousness. Thanks be to God. For all, for all people, for all people to achieve our true humanity as designed by our Creator, to live into the way that God has designed us to follow Jesus Christ, who came to us as Emmanuel, God with us, then we must humbly, humbly come to the waters and be changed, changed forever by that water and God's Spirit. This is why we remember today. This is why we celebrate. This is something that we should actually claim and remember each day, each day. When we get into the shower, when we take that first sip of water, when we drive by the river, when it rains or snows even, the promise of the sure and certain hope of the gifts of God and the resurrection, the fact that we too, heirs with Christ, are beloved by God. So brothers and sisters, hear this today. You count no matter what you've been through, no matter what you come through, no matter what you are going through right now, you count. You count so much to God. God is ready and has welcomed you into his family as heirs, a part of an inheritance that is equal to his son, Jesus Christ. Hard to get your mind around, I know. But remember this today. Remember this gift and share it in this new year in ways that reveal that righteousness, in ways that the light of his love and grace can be known and shared. And those waters of baptism can continue to be splashed around in churches like ours. Until that day, until that day when we gather at the river that flows from the throne of God. Amen, and thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we have heard that it is time for us to return to the waters. Let us join together now in experiencing once more the outpouring of God's grace as we join together in confession, assurance, and a renewal of our baptismal vows. The words for this will appear on the bottom of your screen. Even as we enter into the presence of God, we exclaim with the prophet Isaiah, Woe is me! I am a person of unclean ways, 
dwelling among a tainted people. If we claim we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And yet, if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So trusting in the steadfast love of God in Christ Jesus the Lord, let us pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. Sovereign God, in baptism you called us to turn from sin and to turn to Jesus Christ. Yet we stray from his ways and we do not heed your call. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. In baptism, you joined us to Christ in his death that we might be raised with Christ in new life. Yet we cherish old ways and fail to embrace the risen life of righteousness, justice, and love. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. In baptism, you united us with all the baptized who confess your name. Yet we too often foster division in the church. We refuse to live as one people and so fail to witness to your reconciling love before the world. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. In baptism, you call us to ministry in all realms of life, but we often refuse the struggle to know your will. We do not nurture the ways of peace. We allow enmity to grow among us, setting neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse the earth that you entrust to our care and often live in discord with all that you have made. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. In baptism, you sent us to serve with compassion all for whom Christ died. Yet we often ignore the suffering of the oppressed and the plight of the poor. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. In baptism, you gave us the Holy Spirit to teach and guide us. And yet we rely on ourselves and refuse to trust your direction. We spurn your eternal wisdom, preferring instead the luring ways of the world. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy mercy on on us. Holy God, remember the promises you made to us in baptism. Forgive our sinful ways and heal our brokenness. Set us free from all that enslaves us and raise us to new life in Jesus Christ that we may be your faithful servants showing forth your healing love to the world to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us Christ rose for us, Christ lives in power for us, and Christ even prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is of the new creation. The old life is finished, gone. Behold, new life has begun. Brothers and sisters, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory Glory to to God. God. Amen. Amen. Let us now renew our sacred vows and commit ourselves anew to the way of Christ and his holy church. I ask these questions. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your steadfast commitment to Christ? We We do. do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian life and serve those around you, caring as Christ cared for all? We We will. will. Do you recommit yourselves to be Christ's representatives in the world, 
supporting the work of Christ in your church through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. We We do do. to the the glory glory of of God. God. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we come now to the table of Christ. So if you are viewing with us from home and you're going to have communion, we'll go ahead and ask you to get your communion elements out now. And even if you are not going to participate in communion, we ask you to grab that water that we ask you to um, to get at the beginning of the service. It can be just a little bit of water in a cup and a saucer. You saw us pouring some on the altar earlier during our liturgy. And as you have those things before you, we're going to start with a blessing over the waters of baptism. Let us pray together. Holy God, we have made vows to you this day as part of our remembering your son's baptism. And we come now to you calling upon the power of your Holy Spirit that you would open the heavens from right where we are today, and that you would pour over us with a strong and wonderful memory of our baptism and of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pour upon the water before us, Lord, that it might be a sign, a symbol of remembrance of the vows that we have made to you and the covenant that you have made with us. Lord, we pray this prayer in the power and grace of your Son, the beloved one, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Church, having blessed these waters, we invite you now to dip your fingers in the water that you have before you to make the sign of the cross uh, either on your forehead or on your hand and to say to yourself and to those that you are worshiping with today, to remember your baptism and be thankful. We invite you to to join us now for a moment of remembrance. Amen. As we have remembered our baptism, let us move now to remember the grace of Christ made known at the table. Let us pray. Holy God, for the gift of your forgiveness, for the gift of your blessing and grace upon us from those first drops of water in our baptism to the flood of your amazing grace that we experience all of our days. We give you thanks. We pray now, Lord, as we turn and we come to table and we have remembered so much today of the way of Jesus that you would remind us, Lord, of all that he did for us, all that he wants for us, and all that he calls us to in this present day and age. We come now with open hearts, open minds, and open hands, Lord, to be used for the work of your kingdom. Remind us, Lord, of how much you love us and how much Jesus loves us as we come now. We pray this and we come now in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. On that night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he was having a meal with his disciples. And at that meal, Christ took the bread He gave thanks to God, and he broke that bread, and he shared it with his disciples. And he said to them, Take and eat, for this is my body, and it's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper was finished, Christ took the cup. And again he gave thanks to God and shared that cup with his disciples. And he said to them, Take and drink. For this is my blood of the new covenant, and it is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me.
And so, Lord, in remembrance of all your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves today, Lord, renewed by the memory of our baptism, renewed by the grace made known in Jesus Christ, that we would be holy and living sacrifices that we would witness to the gift of our baptism each and every day, Lord, the gifts that you give us. So pour out your spirit upon us now and upon these gifts before us of mere bread and juice. Make them be for us the true body and blood of Christ that we would be empowered in this new year to witness to your goodness in all that we do. Until that day, Lord, when we meet you by that river on high, and we feast with you forevermore. We pray in the power of your love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Church, let us join together now in praying that prayer that Jesus taught us while he was with us on earth by praying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The bread that we share is a sharing in the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the cup that we share is a sharing in the blood of Christ. This is the cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is with joy now that we say that you can receive these gifts as the body and blood of Christ. Take a piece of your bread or your cracker and receive it and offer it to those gathered with you as the body of Christ given just for you. And take the cup that is before you and share in the juice as the blood of Christ poured out just for you. Thanks be to God. Amen invite you to pray with us. Lord, we thank you for the mystery of your amazing grace, the power of that stream of grace that flows in and through all things and leads us into the hope that is on the horizon for us in this newness of this year. Strengthen us, Lord, as we rise today, having been nourished and having remembered your grace that we might faithfully serve and offer your grace to the world around us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as you rise, we remind you to return your elements to the good earth, or you can consume them with reverence. God bless you, and amen. <laughs>
brothers and sisters in Christ, as we arise from remembering our baptisms today, let us go forth into the newness of this year, into the world around us, sharing the goodness of God, knowing that we count and that we are beloved and having a desire that all would come to those waters. So go forth and share the good news. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, let us go forth in peace. Amen. Thank you.